Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today's lesson is going to be on a simple calculator that we're going to be building. So we're going to mimic something like the calculator app in Windows. So this is a simple calculator application that comes preloaded with Windows. And as you guys can see, we have the 10 numbers over here, 0 to 9. We have a comma and we're also going to be including the basic four basic operands, uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication and division, as well as the equal sign and a clear all button. So we're going to go with something like your numpad, uh, your numpad layout. And instead of having numlock, we're going to go with clear all. So we're just going to go to file, create a new project, Java, Java application, and then just name this whatever you like. I'm just going to name it simple calculator. How do you spell that? <laughs> and then we're just going to create a package. I'm going to name my app package. So we're going to right click on app package, go down to new JFrame form and then name this start GUI. So this is our GUI currently and we're just going to resize this. So, so we went with dimensions of 300 by 350. So we're just going to populate the JFrame with a few of the components and then Daniil will take over and he will show you how to make it in Photoshop. So the first thing we need to do is configure our JFrame. So just right click, go down to properties and set the title as anything you like so calculator uh, we want to turn off resizable so uncheck that we also want to make it undecorated because we're going to be building a custom JFrame and we obviously want this to load up in the middle so we're going to go to code so we're going to change the form size policy to generate resize code uncheck position and generate in the center uncheck the size so now when we run this we should have a plain plain white UI that you guys can see and I'm just going to close this now you guys can see that it had a bit of a gray background so we need to go into the source code scroll down a bit and then look for the look and feel settings code and we're going to edit numbers to windows and that will change the default theme to the windows and as you guys can see it's a plain white background okay so to make Daniel's life a bit easier uh, we're just going to add in a text field so that he can find out um, in Photoshop what he needs to do. Yeah, but you're going to make it hard for me. It's yeah. not easy at all. No, it's talking shit. <laughs> so how big text field do you want? Like that big? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty big. It's uh, yay big. It is that big. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave it there. That's pretty good. Okay, so that is what we're going to do with the text field. And then Daniel's going to take over and then add the rest of the buttons in Photoshop so he will take over the tutorial from now and I'll see you guys later hi guys welcome back uh, my part of the tutorial is the design and as you can see Mayo did a pretty good job by doing nothing in the GUI <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he's behind me playing Call of Duty right now and basically what I want to do is bring this into Photoshop and before I do that I'm just gonna press down uh, Windows button and Q if you have Windows 8 and get the snipping tool oh it doesn't matter if it's a Windows 8 tutorial you can edit that out Okay, now I'm going to click new for the snipping tool. I'm just going to go to the corner. I'm just going to try to get the best possible position. And then click it and then drag out until you reach the other corner. And as you can see, we got a fairly good snipping of it. The top didn't come out, but it's fine. I'm going to go save this as capture in, let's say, pictures, which is fine. And then afterwards, I'm just going to close NetBeans up. And then open up Photoshop. Once that is done, we can import our file by file open. Go back to pictures and we're going to look for our capture. As you can see, it's pretty much done. 100% um, zoom, so it's actual size. And I'm going to create a new layer on top of it. I'm creating a new layer on top of it because we're not going to edit this layer out. We're just going to use it as a mask or a guide to show where everything needs to go. And in this um, GUI, we're definitely going to make a custom JFrame. So as you can see, I just did the top with a section tool and I'm gonna select the color of we'll make it a we'll make it a a black and we'll fade it out later. So after I have my section we're gonna go ahead and hold on control and press delete which is going to fill it with the white color, obviously the black color and then we're gonna double click it, go to color overlay, select the color and go down to black. 
afterwards we're gonna make um, another layer on top of the guide and we're gonna just gonna fill this uh, with white again control and delete and afterwards you're gonna double click that and we're just gonna make a cool um, color overlay so we'll just make a gray and we'll add a picture over it just to make it cool the picture I chose is obviously what we have which is the wood texture we used in part one of the the lock screen and we're just gonna zoom out and make it smaller Cut, shift and alt and it'll just drag to the center without killing its ratio and we're just gonna add it to the center afterwards I'm gonna use my crop tool and just get a double click in the center so my image crops so right now I made a white background and I added the wood texture over it because what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna make a cool like just like a opacity drop on our bar so it just kind of fades in and makes it look nice afterwards I can just delete the back layer and then just lighten up the opacity of the wood so I can see what's going where as you can see my is raging behind me because he's playing Call of Duty so afterwards what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna make um, the display area of the calculator at, at the top and I'm gonna carry on with the black scheme so I'm just gonna make uh, switch the colors around so it goes with black and then control and delete and then we're just gonna make the opacity about 70 for both of these sorry I didn't tell you this earlier there's a quick fix and basically what we left with we turn up the the wood is we have this basic layout of what we're gonna do and we're gonna turn this up to 100 again because when Mayo puts in the text field uh, we want to make it opa uh, op the opacity like full down so we can just see um, the letters afterwards we need to make the button so we have our basic layers done already so we're gonna select both these layers and just group them up afterwards we're just gonna turn this layer my mistake so now we're gonna make the buttons and we're gonna make them fairly small uh, around about um, that big and we just, we just made um, a section with the rectangular tool and we're gonna make another layer on top of that and just fill it in with black again control delete afterwards we can just drop the opacity down to 70 and we're gonna do a cool transition in this so when we when we use this we're gonna we're gonna make it transition, uh, do a transition from 70% of opacity to 100%. This is only when you hover over the icon in the program. So I'm just gonna move this over, scoot it over until we get like a good layout of this. And we can just duplicate and move it down. It doesn't matter how much space you leave to it, I'm just gonna leave a rough spacing. Doesn't really matter. And we're gonna carry on with another one. And a few more. Now I'm just gonna finish up this GUI with making up a all the icons instead of you watching me do this. I'm just gonna speed it up.
So now that I've laid out the buttons and the J labels for each, as you can see, there's a lot of J labels. Uh, I'm now going to show you how to code the transitions. I'm going to do one and I'm going to speed it up later. So it basically saves you more time, like the other 100 million times that I've showed you speed outs. So I'm just going to right click it, go to event, mouse, motion, and mouse moved. Afterwards, I'm just going to highlight this. And we're going to type in this this code here so basically it says j label 13 which we're going to label the values later and we're just going to change this to 100 okay now let me do the i'm quickly going to do the rest okay. <laughs> so now that i've finished coding the transitions i'm just going to show you what it looks like i'm just going to run the app and then i hover over it and it quickly changes to black now, as you can see, once it changes to black, it does not change back to a, to a lighter color. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to close this and end this. I'm going to go and look for my background layer. And I'm going to right click it, go to event, mouse motion, mouse moved. So now that you're here in the event um, and code section, you want to copy each of these codes for the labels go all the way down and paste them in tedious process but it's what you get for graphics so now that that is done we're just going to take all the values and just change them to 70 now the speed up so now that we are done coding we're just going to show you what it looks like as you can see after I hover over the buttons basically it gets darker so you just know what you're doing um, you don't have to do this but this is just a cool method and you just learn something new anyway so we're gonna hand this over to Mayor and he's just gonna code the rest okay guys welcome back so Daniel just finished up the design and the coding for the basic layout of a calculator however we cannot actually close the app just yet so I'm just gonna code the simple closing application and we're just gonna drag and drop a label directly over the X button and we want to drag this label above the background label so I'm just gonna rename jlabel1 to the background And J label 36 to close. Why do you put so many fucking labels? So we're just going to edit the text. So right click on the label, go to edit text, and then remove whatever text is inside. And then we can code our close button. So in order to do that, we just have to right click on our label, go down to events, mouse, mouse released. And then all we're going to do is we're just going to type in system.exit and in brackets put in a zero. So this will cause our program to exit. And now when you run a program, you actually see we have the nice design. And when you hover over the X button, we can click it and it closes the app. As you guys can see at the bottom, it tells us the build has been successful. So there's only one problem. Um, I prefer to have a changed cursor. So we're just going to right click, go down to properties, and look for the cursor options. And we're just going to change this to the hand icon. And now when we hover over this button, it'll change the hand icon to let the user know that you can actually close the program. So in this tutorial, we just covered basic design and transitioning between multiple different image icons to create a very vibrant looking GUI. So we'll call this one part one and then in the next tutorial, we'll cover how to actually program this application. And if you guys like the tutorial, please don't forget to leave us a like, comment, subscribe. And if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comment section below and we'll gladly get back to you. So thanks for watching guys.